What is up, down, and sideways, you love the individuals. We are back. It's Lee Guy Mark here. Mark here with you, beautiful folks, for some week three global power rankings as we enter that little bit of a break hiatus with all these major regions. Gives us extra time to reflect, overact, and get angry at these rankings. Always, always business as usual with the power rankings. Always going to step on somebody's toes. Always going to make somebody's day finding out that their squad is ahead of where they expected. Just the way things go, just the way things move. As we move into a weird pause in, in some of these regions or you know, transition phase as we're approaching in the LPL to move to the next phase, important to check in on where the global standings are. And the theme right off the get-go for this one is a couple of squads making noise, making their whole season so far with some big upsets, and that is KT Rolster and LGD, both getting on this list for the first time this split for sure, probably this year for LGD. But KT obviously avoiding a 1-5, 0-6 disaster, getting the huge win and the telecom war, which regardless of standings, we know, always delivers mark it doesn't matter it always delivers even at the t1 homestand you get the kt rollster victory in the telecom war and it was uh, a well-earned victory for kt rollster getting the vins in game two and game three of, and holding on in that series that's the important part that you have to be looking at yes they corrected the ship making sure that isn't that owen owen five situation and then they get the win here as well against T1. This is by no means, I think, the proper place where KT Rolster should find themselves. I think this is as well getting a little bit of a boost up from that, um, uh, getting that notoriety at beating T1. It's going to be about how you continue from here for KT Rolster. Because if you can continue this type of path, this type of form and play, you can be in that conversation for the playoffs because things have gone drastically, uh, abys have been so bad to start out the split. That that's now where you're looking at it. The you know the the repair job has got to be to get back into the playoffs. This is that starting step, I believe. Yeah, and the perfect time again going into a break to get some confidence for the squad because there's a whole lot of summer split left. That yeah, you could be still talking about them climbing towards that top four status, but we were expecting them to be on this list. Ain't nobody expecting LGD. To have ever been on this list, but handing BLG their first and only loss of this first round in come from behind win in game three action is more than deserving of them getting some respect. That is completely deserving of a spotlight being shown on you and getting that little bit of a bump up, a little bit of a boost. And again, as you mentioned, a big part of that boost, just like a KT Rolster, getting that jump up from the T1 victory is that victory, that upset and come from behind against BLG. I didn't think anybody was going to be able to cook up one of these upsets against BLG at this stage, this uh, section of the LPL. But here we are. And yes, you do got to give credit to LGD. They're still not necessarily in a position where they're going to be able to maximize on this type of victory. But it is a very good one to see and one of those progress ones to keep track of in the LPL. PSG stays put in that 18 spot. They go to 4-0. We're still waiting. They got the showdown against Flying Oyster. Next on the schedule for them, a pair of 4-0 squads. NIP didn't really get any games out of them. They get bumped down a spot, and that is primarily because FlyQuest, not only do they climb up three spots, but they simultaneously kick Dignitas in the head and bounce them out of the top 20. I'm, I'm so conflicted about this FlyQuest team proving themselves like this because at one point... Uh, you know, I'm looking at it and I'm going, I can't trust this team again. I can't trust these players, this combination of the stars of Whippo and Inspired for the squad. You know, the, the green bottom lane and then never mind throwing in quad as a rookie in the mid lane. I can't trust them after MSI. But then you watch the LCS and maybe outside of week one where you kind of still saw a bit of the jitter, still a bit of the solving it out. It's been relatively stable since then from what we have seen from this group. And that stability looks like Bwipo's and Inspire's creativity in that top jungle duo and what they're able to extract from that. Quad has been leveling up in how comfortable he looks on that LCS main stage. 
And then the bottom lane, you're getting contributions from Masu and Busio. That is the important thing to look at is the difference between this split and last split. I think this one, early signs are a lot stronger from that FlyQuest bot lane. And yeah, part of that is probably the meta that Inspired and Bootbo are able to maybe cook a little bit, less so top lane. I mean, there's Scarter, Cassante, now Dr. Mundo all day. But I'm sure Whippo's going to have some picks that come uh, later on throughout this regular season. But yeah, they got to earn the trust back after that debacle that was MSI. But last week was a good step towards that. It was a bad step for a couple of squads, both Kwangdong and Fnatic, dropping down the standings. Now, I want to harp here. Kwangdong, you're much less concerned about, and they have more of a tumble because teams in front of them looked pretty good this week. Obviously, they were outmatched in two out of the three games against D+. But I'm more concerned about the tumble that's happening to Fnatic right now. Yes, and I think that is uh, the right way to examine both of these little falls, little slip-ups in the standings. Guangdong Freaks, more so just the situation of kind of what's happening ahead of them in the traffic jam for this power rankings as well as getting that little bit of a knockback, a little bit of a pushback from D plus Kia kind of sending you down a bit saying, look, you might be prepared to be a playoff level team, but in these playoff level teams, you've still got some work to do because we are going to be there as well. And we are gatekeeping you from any type of progress at this point. You flip the switch and you look at Fnatic in the LEC and this type of slip up, this type of, you know, beginning of a slump for this Fnatic team, hesitant to call it that heading into where we are in the because that's a dangerous territory to be in uh to have a slump this fanatic squad you've got a couple of question marks as far as that performance where this power level is for this team and has it waned from when they were on that revenge tour path coming off of msi yeah, it just seems like they've took the foot off the gas a little bit losing to teams like team heretics that they should have no problem taking down and it's just it's hard to pinpoint one specific thing, but I'm honestly just going with a little too loosey-goosey. They probably start 6-0 and and are feeling re good, fully expecting them to refocus in these best-of rounds as playoffs roll around, especially uh, with an easier first-round matchup on the docket for them. Anyone's legend gets bumped down a spot, but again, like NIP, haven't really seen many games out of them, and that's more we're putting some respect on Cloud9, who aren't jumping ahead of G2 or anything crazy like that, but now Cloud9 is firmly in the spot of just need more games because it's, you know, three straight series that they've looked more dominant than they did for the majority of spring. They continue to improve. That is the one thing that I think a lot of people, even the Cloud9 haters and doubters, do need to give credit over to this team for Summer Split and what they have been able to do and what the improvements have been week one, week two, Week three, as you move on through, that has got to be something that is recognized with this Cloud9 team, because I think, and rightfully so, called out, and you could look back at some of the uh, some of the uh, viewers saying, you know what, I would have taken FlyQuest ahead of Cloud9 even last week, type of stuff talking about that situation. I think that what we have seen from Cloud9, and even you know, uh, you know, like, even if you remove the, the doubts that you have about FlyQuest and that roster, that organization after MSI and you're looking at them with equal footing with this Cloud9 team, I think the way that Cloud9 has continued to accelerate how good they look and how clean they can take away things from the other team, that's the number one thing that I'm looking at, why that separates them in the power rankings. And even if you say, okay, FlyQuest was so much more dominant against Dignitas than Cloud9 was in their week one matchup, week one always feels like a little bit of an anomaly as teams are kind of only getting back into the swing of things for stage games so yes FlyQuest is absolutely comparable to Cloud9 now a little bit more uh, than Team Liquid but you're still giving the edge with how dominant C9 has been. Uh, G2 staying put doesn't get bumped up doesn't fall down even though they had a 2-0 weekend it was a very spicy one against Team Heretics but uh, still not quite in the top 10 but fully expecting kind of like Fnatic these old guard EU squads to show up even more in the best ofs. What is it about these two mainstays of the LEC that we can have kind of these polar opposite things go hot and cold all the time where you watch a fanatic and they have this incredible hot start and you've got all the confidence in the world for them and a couple of little things go wrong and all of a sudden you're on that downward slide and you've got all those questions and you are doubting a fanatic squad 
But then you look at G2 and it's been sloppy. We've called it the hangover after MSI and it's never quite all the way gotten back to that peak level of form, that top forms that we know that G2 can get to, not just the individual players, but this iteration of G2 together. We have seen it from this group and what they can do. That is what we are waiting for in the LEC, this split from that G2 to arrive. But you don't have any doubts that that G2 will arrive. You believe it's going to be the next match. It's going to be the best of series. Of course, G2 has to show up because they almost always do. That's why you can have confidence in a G2 holding into this type of spot and why we have those questions, say, further down the list out of Fnatic. Yeah, they have the precedent that they've had sketchy regular seasons and time and time again turn it on over the past splits years does this g2 roster but still one of the least impressive seven and two records that you'll see <laughs> in round robin action over in the lec it was fully impressive for the two eu squads just inching out ahead of g2 in that 10 and 9 spot we're talking bds sk a combined 16 and 2 record all you have to do is look at the dominance of the games that they won. Look at all the stats from the regular season, and it's no question these were the two best seat teams from round one. And you could honestly probably argue one, two, which one you want there. And I could also make the argument that there is a very different level of sticking power for both of these squads at this point. What level of adhesive has been used to put them on to the power ranking wall at this point? Because when I'm thinking about SK, maybe we're just using regular scotch tape because you don't have that full confidence just yet. Even if that painting, it's its a Mona Lisa look looking painting. You're they still don't have the precedent like BDS as well has, right? But then that's the thing. You look at BDS and where they have proven themselves over this course of this run and how much you can believe in this quality, this elite level being the for real deal. When we get to the best of scenarios, that's where you get that value as BDS. And that's where I view them more so getting that actual proper full on picture frame, nail it up there. We've done the leveling and everything because this is what type of confidence I have with BDS at this point, but I don't want that to take away from what positives we have seen from SK because those are for real. What they have put out so far this split and carved out and earned for themselves in the LEC. I think the important ones to check in here, of course, is the new new bottom lane has been a fantastic addition, one that has really upped the firepower for the team, but it is the mainstays. It is Niski in the mid lane being that veteran leader for the team and it's irrelevant in the top side i think we've talked about this at various other points over the last year or so checking in with his progression in the lec he has certainly molded himself out carved out in stone as a top lane demon in the lec i just really hope both these teams aren't just getting rolled over by g2 and Fnatic as things <laughs> turn around for the best of fives we want to see some new look lec squads really making a deep run and knocking down one of the kings of Europe, but right now the Kings in the West are still Team Liquid sitting pretty in that eight spot. And as we talk time and time again on these rankings, that's the that's the halt sign for usually Western squad saying, Whoa, 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 this is the eight spot. You cannot progress any higher. It's kind of like one of those situations where you gotta kill a certain boss to get another level up for your weapon to get better attributes, but it's like, yep, yeah, I can't get to that next boss. Uh, you gotta progress list. the main story further to get here. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's in the he's in the next zone. I can't even get there yet. The bridge is blocked from traffic. What's going on here type of thing? Yes, Team Liquid stuck in that traffic jam thanks to their LCS license plate is the way things are going for them. But they can't look almost any better without having one of these international competition opportunities to prove yourself against these elite elite squads of the other major regions that's where team liquid has carved themselves out in this early part of the lcs split impact in the top side has proven his timeless worth and how amazing he is as this team liquid ambassador for the top side general umpty has been great in the jungle really seemingly meshing even better than Piosik ever did with the Team Liquid roster. APA and Jan, your two young cornerstones that we love to talk about with Team Liquid have been your leading superstars. This split as far as why you're doing this well, why you're getting the X factors, why you're getting the difference makers in your games, in these individual moments, it's APA and Jan making big plays for the team. And of course, Deddy 
Freddy, Mr. Core, JJ down in the bottom lane, Captain America keeping things strong with the shield. They got the opposite of the MSI hangover still. They got uh, a heavy leftover dose of MSI hopium. They're saying, we competed. We're going to be even better at Worlds. We're going to dominate the LCS. They have fully carried that MSI momentum. But they got a plethora of LCK and LPL teams ahead of them, starting with a pair of LCK squads who have swapped this week. We're talking D+. Plus and Hanwha Life. Hanwha played a competitive uh, O2 loss to Gen.G, which I know sounds ridiculous, but that's the standard we're holding Gen.G to, but it's really the Kwangdong series out of D+, that we're able to bump them back into that sixth spot. And how about you got Vintage Kingin on Renekton and Gragas in that series? And by the way, Lucid now has the most player of the games in the entire LCK. So the top half of the D plus lineup stepping up this week. Oh man, right? You know, you know those like old like 70s and 60s action movies you watch and the police, you know, they get on a chase and they gotta put, you know, they gotta reach in the car and then put on the red light on top of the car and it's flashing. That's how I feel right now. The other LCK teams should be looking at D plus Kia's that they're reaching in the car and putting on that red light alarm type of thing. This is a team that is climbing up and finding their confidence. And that is a scary thing when they are already one of the great teams of the LCK and are proving themselves to be up in the challenger zone for elite level with a T1, with an, a Gen G, and bumping out maybe a Hanwha life from that type of category in the LCK. You laid it out for us. Kingin on the Renekton, big time King Godzilla in the LCK showing up and doing some big damage. That's world's MVP Kingin showing up in this series. That's the type of Kingin that D plus is going to need if they are going to be one of the elite teams in the LCK. You also shouted out Lucid and, and how well he's doing. And that is one of those things that, of course, keeping track of with D plus and what we had hyped up and talked about so much with his pedigree heading in to taking over for Canyon this year. But the D-plus boys are sitting outside the VIP lounge. They're trying to pick the lock to get in, make sure that nobody's watching, but JDG and the rest of the crew are looking through the doorbell cam And Man, look at these guys trying to pick their way in here. As most of the LPL squads wrapped up their matches, JDG closed out a 2-0 against DDG. Maybe it took a little longer than it should have, but thankfully... It was sheer starting both of these games, and that's why I'm giving them a check mark. And that has to be, I think, the expectation moving forward, and especially as we leave behind this fearless draft uh, segment of the LPL season and move in to that upper bracket territory where now it's the best of the best against each other in the LPL, and you got to prove your worth in this, uh, you know, elite arena uh, brawler knockout. JDG was sheer. That's one of the squads that I would like to see in that type of fight, in that type of tournament. And blessed as us, we are going to get that. Mash the alarm. Everybody panic. We've got movement in the top five. T1. They get smacked by Kwangdong in one game. They almost have a comeback, but then end up ultimately losing it in the third game. But there's so much high stakes in this top five, even losing one series. We're not actually worried about T1, but Top Esports was immaculate in that first round. So it's enough to bump T1 to four, but guys, this doesn't actually mean anything. I think, I think if, if Zeus has shown that he could place Garner to a very good level, we'd be talking about T1 holding their spot or this good weekend. Level. Just, just good. Yeah, I think uh, we can go that far. It was not pretty from him. And I know that's one of those ones where we've asked, you know, it's a tough thing because we've asked to see new things, different things, different angles and find that success from him as a top laner. But when you really reflect on this past year and how everything has gone, I don't think we've ever seen him look anywhere close to that Zeus, that God of Thunder of the top lane level of play outside of maybe Jace, Aatrox and Wow, you, you can tell me, when was the last time Jason Aatrox were really at that forefront of the meta? Well, Worlds. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. Did they win Worlds? Oh, oh, makes sense. That's where you have to go back to. So that's certainly one of the issues that you are keeping track of with T1, as uh, of course, along with you know the whole DDoS situation and everything else surrounding it. There is a lot of external factors going on with T1. At the end of the day, it makes the picture a little more cloudy, even if the ending view, it should still be one of the elite teams of the world that we still have and one of the ones that you can almost never 
count out in one of these competition settings. And then you're going to say, well, BLG also lost a series. So shouldn't they be punished and be going down? Well, BLG so far in 2024 has built up more of uh, more leniency in terms of, you know, actually winning the spring split, getting to the finals of MSI. And they've got a couple of head to heads directly against top esports from spring. So a little bit more leeway for BLG in that two spot. They've set up more distance, but there's even more distance now from them to Gen G, who let's just rip off some of these stats, Mark. They've now set a record, 24 series wins in a row. That is 130 days since they lost last a series. And during that time, they are 55 and 10 overall. And oh yeah, it was KT Rolster that last beat them back in February. What were you doing in February? How huh? what think about that? I was Try riding high on the back. KT train, I guess. Holy cow, try to dial it back and that feels like forever ago and that just is that legacy of dominance coming in from Gen G. The back to back to back to back LCK champions, MSI champions. Yes, they have proven themselves to be at that very forefront of the global power rankings. There's no question about it. You mentioned BLG and, you know, kind of where they fall down type of situation. Uh, T1 feels like they went bungee jumping and they, you know, you know, when those, some of those ones have the one where they're over the water and your hair dips in. So, I, yeah, I know it's safe, but it gets a little bit less because yeah, you're hitting it. Uh, BLG is the one where they're bungee jumping and they got a clear amount of space between them and the rest of the canyon to go down is the way you feel about their loss. But again, it does separate even further the difference between one and two, which was already starting to separate. That's how crazy good Gen G is because BLG is that number two team in the world. Incredible, Wazoo, all these amazing things. And Gen G was separating from them even before BLG has this slip up. That's the impressive nature of Gen G at number one. If these other squads are bungee jumping, Genji is doing that Red Bull space jump from the edge <laughs> of the atmosphere coming down. That's how far ahead they are from the rest of the competition. But yeah, going to be hard to knock them out of that number one spot when they haven't dropped a game at all yet in summer. But that is it today for those global power rankings.